The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Volts, amps, ohms. I'm in the zen zone of celestial light, baby. I really enjoyed that turkey sandwich I had for breakfast. Yum, that was that sure did get me into the zen here, I tell you. I am definitely the voice of Matt Ergle. Oh, man, this project, it's never gonna get done. I can't get it finished and I, what the? Felix, why is there some random guy in here meditating on our center table? Who are you? I'm Matt Ergle, I'm the winner of the Hack Like Heck contest. Oh, I remember, we watched your entry about the Ninja Turtle game. Yeah, bro. What are you doing here? Well, see, the, the vibes in Madison were just so gnarly, I had to come in here and get my zen on. What's zen? It's sort of like this all-knowing force that like penetrates us and guides us and binds the galaxy together. Maybe we could all use some more zen. Should we build something to give us zen? Well, I was thinking we could build a robot zen garden using CNC parts. Okay, I guess we probably have the equipment to make that happen. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Bat them hatches! Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So, um, I guess we're going to build something while you're here. Yes, that, that was sort of the thing that we were supposed to do. So, uh, you and Karen were discussing an idea like a uh, zen garden? Yeah, so we were t discussing this idea like, a, uh, like a, a, a motorized zen garden that you could like sit here and kind of remotely just zen out in your chair and just kind of doo -doo 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 draw from a distance. Oh, okay. So there'd be like a joystick control of some kind? Yeah, like some kind of a, a handheld controller and, and stepper motors and things and it moves a little rake around and draws designs. Well, I do have this bin of stepper motors. Oh. Perfect. So I used to go to uh, Halted Supply Surplus in uh, Silicon Valley, and I'd always buy their stepper oh, motors. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always buy more than I need. Mm -hmm. So now we have more than we need. That's amazing. All right, so you want to make like a CNC gantry then? Yeah, so like a box of, and a gantry on top and, you know, have a couple of XY and, and maybe something to rotate the rake and lift it up and down and do different things. So what does the rake look like? I'm not really into Zen gardens. So like your typical Zen garden rake is going to be like a, a just a flat piece, usually wood. You know, right. And then, you know, maybe four large tines coming out of it. But of course, that's like full human scale. But... Uh, Oh, can you, can you draw it? We have a board. Okay, yes, we do. Things. So, yeah, you've got like a... Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, see, like that. Now, I wonder if that's something we could 3D print. Oh! Hey, I'll just do this right now. Go cool, like 45 degrees to make sure you get the edge. So, I think the next question is... We're gonna need a part that goes around this with a set mm -hmm. screw, yep. basically so it can be installed. And then that, look up to the servo to give us the rotation. Yep. Then once we have that figured out, then we can use these mounting points on the servo to make an actuator for the rack and pinion vertical Z. Mm -hmm. Vertical Z, how redundant. So, um, yeah, I guess I can draw the next part. So maybe like a computer thing. Okay, so I've got this piece here which represents the servo. It's just basically, you know, this portion of the servo. Right, right. The mounting portion. And then right behind it, I have this represents, well, this is the plastic that it will mount to. So I think the rest of the enclosure we have to build off of this. Of course, this is kind of floating in midair. Mm -hmm. But that is, that is the distance. So if we think about this right there. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, even looking at like this, obviously the camera can't see this, but lines up pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think what we could do is maybe just print this real quick, just to make sure it's right. Mm -hmm and then uh, we can continue designing from there. Right on. Hey, I printed out that frame. Ah. Basically just to see if it fits. Uh -huh. So we look at it from this side, and yeah. yes, it all lines up. Fantastic. Cool, and we got enough gap on the side, so we can use this frame to build up the thing that's gonna hold the servo. So the thing is, this has to move up and down, right? Mm -hmm. 
and it needs a rack and pinion and also needs a side. So I think we should, uh, we should draw it on the whiteboard. Let's do it. Okay, so we have that frame, right? Right, right. It's about like yay big. Mm -hmm. So we made that. Now we need a way to make, move this up and down. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking we could maybe have possibly some uh, rods here as well, right? Okay. On either side of it and then have the bearings. So our servo comes down here, comes up like that. You've got all our actuator stuff down here, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, we come over, come up like this and have some rods go through that. And th that's what would be on the gantry arm. Mm -hmm. So this thing slides up and down on those rods. Okay. And then in the rear of it, you can draw a side view now. The rear of it, we'd have some sort of, well, we'd have a rack like that. And then a pinion, world's best gear drawing. Lovely. Out. Yeah. Is that a spacely sprocket or a Cogswell cog? It's both. Oh, wow. So this would uh, basically, yeah, this will rotate and move it up and down along linear shaft. So this stepper, or, sorry, this servo would be mounted to a frame which would be connected to these supports here. Okay. So that would basically capture it. And then as long as we have um, one inch of travel, we should be good. Okay. Yeah, basically that. I think it'll work. So what we could do is we could design that and then we could design the thing that holds it. So again, we just keep working our way back from the tool. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Designing it backwards. Okay, so here what I've done is I have just soldered the headers onto this Arduino shield and uh, added it to the Arduino board here. And I've uploaded some test code to the Arduino just to kind of see if everything is working. So we've got a, um, we've got a little bit of code that will uh, drive this stepper motor and it will drive this servo here and it just kind of turn them back and forth and just to make sure that we're actually talking to them and communicating right. So go ahead and plug it in. Disco, we're actually doing things. So first step's done. Now we gotta like actually program this thing and oh boy, fun. Hey Matt, what do you got going on here? Okay, so I've been uh, been playing around with the uh, with the example code for the servo driver. Uh, so now what we've got, we've got two servos running independently. Uh, as, or excuse me, two steppers running independently as well as a single server, servo. Now what we gotta do is I'll, I'll get the, uh, the second servo running there and then we will mess around with our code a little bit more so we can get the input going. Uh, what do you got working on here? Oh yeah, um, uh, I've been, we, we come with some idea for the, I know how you wanted to have the joystick to mm -hmm. do the X and Y, right? Right, right. And then you wanted some potentiometers for the, uh, Z and then also to turn the, the, the rake. Right, right. So we got our 1K potentiometers and we think maybe a layout like this where you have uh, your joystick, a knob. We thought maybe a knob here, but then you're like, oh, what about having it on the side or yeah, something? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, so we actually kind of have like sort of a ergonomic sort of look here where yeah. we know this is our direction, this is the rotation because we're looking down mm -hmm. on it and this is up and down because yeah. it's, yeah. Cool. All right. We're going to have two steppers on yeah. one driver? So that is gonna be a challenge. In order to have our, our Y axis uh, be even from both sides so we don't get this little wonkiness, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna actually drive two stepper motors off the same uh, driver here. Okay, okay. So that's gonna be our, our little challenge, making sure that we have enough voltage amperage and correct directions to make this thing work. All right, cool. You keep on that and I'll keep on this and then uh, we'll meet in the middle. Right on. Or somewhere on the edge or the side or Upside somewhere. Upside down. Somewhere, somewhere there the, yeah, the, in the, the introverse. So now we've got two stepper motors actually driven off of a single uh, side here. And of course, because they're going to be oriented opposite of each other, we have to have them in opposite polarity. So uh, they're wired in crisscrossed. But uh, so now they are driving in the same direction if we mount them opposing. And then of course we have our separate motor there and of course our, ster our servo doing its thing over here. So I think it's just about time to cobble this code together and put it to use. What you got there? Oh yeah, this is the, uh, the controller type thing. Oh, fantastic. 
So if we have it plugged in like we so conveniently do right now, yes. we could uh, we can run this code that I've finished putting together that basically just tells uh, tells the different motors uh, what exactly to do based on these inputs, right? So if we've got a uh, straight up, straight down, we got a uh, we got these two guys going on this axis, and then we can we can turn our little servos. That's cool. Right on. And I like the way this is set up because, you know, this is going to be our Z axis. So as we rotate this, it'll actually rotate up and down. So it makes sense to have it over here on the side and vice versa with this. This is fantastic. This is even better designed than the Xbox controller. Hey, Mr. Ergel. Yesterday we had uh, some issues trying to get everything uh, working, but we've managed to get things working almost to the point of perfection. That's almost true. Um, yes. So we have our little servos going that way. We have our servos going up and down. We still got to fix this, um, the limits here on this servo, but yeah, we got that one rolling and we can, we can move. That sounds very nice. This way, yeah. And uh, and I see you've uh, you've made some additions here. So tell me what you got going on right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, our wire was like pretty short there because we were just going off the uh, the servo wires. Mm -hmm. So I extended. I actually I took six wires and wound them all together and extended it. And then I hot glued there. And then I made a little adapter board so they could plug into. And then the servos could plug into there. So if you ever need to replace the servos, you can rip it apart. You don't got to tear the whole wire out. You just got the wire right there. And then I also extended. The uh, stepper wire, I haven't extended the other stepper wire, but um, I actually don't know how long they need to be. And we need to make, we gotta have two of them wired together. And then on our, um, our stepper driver board here, I haven't soldered these in yet, but these, these, I was thinking that these could be our headers for the steppers. Okay. And then another thing I, I discovered, uh, I noticed on this driver, motor driver board here that there is a, uh, there's some marking, some silk screen that says, for optional servo, cut trace. So I cut this trace, or optional servo power, cut trace. So I cut that trace and added a uh, five volt regulator. I connected it to the V in. So um, you got 12 volts coming in this five volt regulator going directly to the steppers, or I'm sorry, the servos, because um, we were browning out because it was running right. off the five volts, the five volt regulator for the uh, Arduino. Mm. And that's, that uh, cured all of our issues with uh, the, the servos. Now they move uh, quite nicely. Yeah. You can go, you can, you can push to the limits there and you, it's just fine. So we just need to fix uh, fix the limit on here in code, and then get these w motors wired up correctly, and yeah. we should be ready to add this to the main carriage box, right? Yeah, that's some awesome type stuff. Fantastic. Okay, the last thing we need to do is design some wheels. So um, Matt and Karen found some pinball rubbers that I think will give us good traction. So we're gonna stretch it around this wheel, and I'm designing it from the ground up, <laughs> literally, so we know how big the diameter should be. So I have an outer diameter of 1.8894, which I drew here. And then I came in one tenth of an inch, or actually, I'm sorry, I came in uh, 0 0.2 inches to accommodate for the rubber. And then I went back out a tenth of an inch for the rubber retainer. So it looks like this. Uh, yeah, so the rubber will fit in this groove. And then we have a set screw right here, which is going to have a hex nut and that should hold it onto the shaft. I'm gonna print two of these, one for either side, then we can put the rubbers on, set screws, and then shove them onto the stepper motors, and uh, hopefully this gives us enough traction. So time to get printing. You ready to zen out, Felix? Yes. All right. All right, here we go. Felix is going to zen out. Let go of your conscious mind. There is no table. Only Zul. A deep cut through the sand. 
Each grain of sand is like a soul of the universe of stars. We are but dust in the wind, dude. Like the sands of an hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Lives which we live the way they live. Live and let die. Oh, now it's time for some creativity. All fathers care for their sons, Danny. Wise men say, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. Hey, it may not have come out exactly the way we planned, but it is a functioning CNC Zen garden. It is, but that's, that's the beauty of Zen, is that even if it doesn't work out the way you plan it, it's still accepting your role in the universe and accepting the way things are and making the best with it. So what would you have done differently? So if I had done this differently, I think we would have had this on the full box carriage, of course, right. going, uh, you know, and we would have this much better contained. But as far as any additional, like, different, uh, different designs or anything like that, I think we're all right on the right page. Uh, maybe we would have had a much, uh, a much more robust uh, controller or something a little bit uh, nicer to hold. Yeah, if we would have had a more advanced marker controller, we could have probably hooked, like, a PlayStation 3 controller mm -hmm. to it via Bluetooth. Yeah, and we, so would have, been cool. we wouldn't have been tethered down with so many wires. Felix has used that in projects before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out pretty cool. So how did you enjoy making your first project here at the Ben Heck Show shop? Oh, this was a fantastic experience. and uh, You got to have spotted cow, cheese yes. curds, culvers, and glass nickel pizza. And, uh, and I experienced a traditional Wisconsin dining at a supper club. Oh, you went to Toby's Supper we Club? Did go to, we did go to Toby's Supper Club. Well, that's all we have for today. What did you think about the CNC Zen Garden? Have you ever built a 3D printer or a CNC machine before? Let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Let's Zen out. Hey, you know what I found in the sewer one time, Felix? No, I don't. Four baby turtles. <laughs> Do you know what they were doing? No, I don't. Crawling in a strange glowing ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Did you scoop them up and put them into an old coffee can? I did. Oh, so I, I started as a rat instead of a human in this version. I always thought the fact that they recruited like wayward teens was pretty, pretty clever. Yeah. Oh, it was very like late 80s, early 90s New York. My phone has died. I won't know what time to take my gas X pills. I won't know when to feed my live-in sloth. My gas X? Your sloth? What are we gonna do? Well, I was thinking about the best way to wire up a clock the other day. Am I sensing a clock off? Hey kids, don't do this at home. <laughs> I've invented the world's first clock 500 years after everyone else. <laughs>